we all have the experience that if we mix oil and vinegar, they will not stay together for long. No matter how vigorously we shake them together, after a few minutes the mixture will completely separate into two different layers. Lipids are less dense than water and for this reason the layer of oil will be floating on top of vinegar, which is water-based. Lipids are a large class of many different molecules with different structures and different functions, but they have one thing in common. They do not easily dissolve in water. We say that they are hydrophobic, literally, they fear water. It is for this reason that oil and vinegar do not like each other and soon water repels oil. This fact that they do not readily dissolve in water is a heck of a problem in our body to digest them, absorb them and transport them in our bloodstream because our intestinal content, the inside of our cells and our bloodstream are all watery and so by themselves lipid would float on top just like they do when added to vinegar, creating all sorts of problems. They wouldn't be accessible to our digestive enzymes and even worse, they would severely interfere with blood circulation. So our body has to come up with all sorts of different tricks to digest and transport lipids, as we will soon learn. Lipids and fats are equivalent names. Someone argues that the name fats should only refer to lipids that are solid at room temperature, whereas if they are liquid, they should be called oils. But in nutrition and in our course, we use fat as an equivalent name to refer to all kinds of lipids, including the oils. There are many different classes of lipids, but three of them are especially relevant in our body and in human nutrition, triglycerides, phospholipids, and sterols. Triglycerides are the most abundant lipids in our food and our body, and they have primarily an energetic function. Phospholipids and cholesterol, which is the most important sterol in our body, are quantitatively less important, but still fundamental in our body, because of the structural and regulatory functions that they have. Crucial in our understanding of lipids will be focusing on the main building blocks of most lipids in our food and our body, the fatty acids. Fatty acids are the key components of triglycerides and phospholipids and are often bound to sterols as well. Two of these fatty acids are essential nutrients, meaning that our body is not able to build them and so they have to come directly from food. They have important regulatory functions, so much so that for a while they were classified as vitamins, vitamin F. All the other fatty acids, as well as triglycerides, phospholipids and sterol, still perform very important functions in our body, but they are not essential, because we can build them ourselves, starting from other molecules. As we will soon learn, lipids have key energetic, structural and regulatory functions in our body. And yet the word fat evokes negative images in most people. Indeed, excess fat, and in particular some specific types of fat, is extremely detrimental to our cardiovascular health. But labeling fat as bad is misleading. We need fat for a variety of important reasons, so much so that if we were to completely exclude all fats from our diet, we would die within a few weeks. So where are lipids in food? Many times when we think of sources of lipids, the first foods that come to mind are those that contain primarily fat, such as butter, oil, mayonnaise, or the visible fat around the steak. But actually lipids are hidden in almost every food. Here you see just a few examples. Fruits and vegetables do not have significant amount of lipids, with some exceptions such as olives or avocados. There's about 3% in whole milk, there's about 14% in meat, and that's after we trim the visible fat. So that steak in the picture actually has more than 14%. But after we trim that visible fat away, we are still left with 14% of fat in the red part, the muscle. Cheddar cheese, 33%, peanuts, 51%, and in general, all nuts and seeds are pretty rich sources of fat. Butter, 81%, and the rest is water. And then oil. There's no water at all in oil, so 100% of what's in it is lipids. They are pure sources of fat. Fat is hidden in most food, even when we don't immediately recognize it as a source of lipids. For example, we typically identify meat and meat products as sources of proteins, and bakery items as sources of carbs. But both these products can hide very large amounts of fat. We have seen that trimmed meat has about 14%, but cold cuts and cured meat can have more, 
especially hot dogs, bacon, ham, bologna, or salami. For example, just one of these chicken and pork hot dogs, weighing 56 grams, has 13 grams of fat, which is 23%. These 30 grams of fat provide 120 calories out of the 160 total calories of the hot dog. That means 75% of the calories of this hot dog come from fat. Half of this preserved pork with ham can, 56 grams total, contains 16 grams of fat, six of which saturated. If you were to eat the whole can, you would be eating 32 grams of fat, equivalent to about 280 calories from fat. But don't forget that fat is also what gives texture and flavor to donuts, pastries, cakes, cookies, crackers, croissants, biscuits, muffins, and many other bakery items. When you look at these cookies, you'd probably identify them primarily as a source of carbohydrates. But actually, each of these cookies, weighing 33 grams, provides 7 grams of fat. So more than 21% of these cookies is fat, and almost half of their calories come from fat. This double chocolate donut also gets identified above all as a source of carbs, because it's sweet and made with flour. But if you look closely, you see that it contains 25 grams of fat. Since it weighs 80 grams, its fat content is more than 31%. You can visualize it as if you were to split this donut in three equal parts, and one of these three parts would be entirely made of fat. This sweet candy bar contains a lot of sugar, but also a lot of fat. It weighs 50 grams, 24 of which are sugar, but 12 of them are fat, seven of which are saturated. In other words, its fat content is 24%, and 43% of its total calories come from fat. These MMMs contain 9 grams of fat out of 50 grams, so their fat content is 18%. This single-serving package of chips, 42.5 grams, contains 10 grams of fat. Their fat content is thus 24%. One serving of these saltine crackers contains 4.9 grams of fat out of 16 grams, so their fat content is 28%. We said vegetables are fat-free, but if they are fried in oil, they can absorb a lot. This large serving of french fries provides 25 grams of fat out of 154 total grams. Thus, their fat content is more than 16%. It may not look that much, but it is if you consider that potatoes by themselves have no fat at all. Instead, 44% of the calories in these french fries come from fat. So just the fact of deep frying these potatoes in oil is enough to almost double their calorie content. Anything that's fried or stored in oil, such as chicken breast nuggets or canned tuna in oil, will provide significant amounts of lipids coming from the oil. Sauces and dressings can hide a lot of fat. For example, this Alfredo sauce, made with cream and cheese, provides 10 grams of fat for a 60 gram serving. Thus, its fat content is more than 16%. Again, this may not seem much, but consider that 77% of this sauce is made of water. Indeed, if you look at the calories, you will find out that 82% of the calories of this sauce come from fats. On top of that, also consider that for most people, including myself, an actual serving is a lot more than a quarter cup. The largest contributor of fat to the US diet anyway is dairy, milk, ice cream, and cheese. Like we already said, milk doesn't have a lot of fat in absolute terms, just 3 to 4%. But because most of it is water, about half of its calories come from fat, if you drink whole milk. On top of that, many people drink a lot. So if you drink a 12 ounces glass of whole milk, you're getting between 11 and 14 grams of fat. And you also need to keep in mind that the fat from milk is not of the best quality because it's mostly saturated fat with a lot of medium-chain fatty acids. This is the reason why people who drink a lot of milk are encouraged to choose skim milk. A half cup serving of this ice cream, which is one fourth of this container, or 107 grams, provides 14 grams of fat. So its fat content is 13%. A single slice of this cheese, 21 grams, provides 6 grams of fat, 4 of which saturated. So the fat content of this cheese is almost 29%. If you eat 2 slices, you're getting 12 grams of fat. The bottom line is, 
The best way to know how much fat is in commercial food is to check the nutrition facts label and check how much fat each serving provides.